Ron Hull got his first job in broadcasting before he even owned a television. In 1953, he produced Front and Center, a variety show for the U.S. Army while serving at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Soon after, he was hired in Lincoln, Nebraska at one of the first educational television stations in the country. Ron was one of only five employees. We didn't have a studio, we didn't have microphones, we didn't have any cameras, we didn't have anything. Hull spent the next decade producing programs of educational and cultural merit, including a creative writing series with author Mari Sandoz and televised lectures with poet John Neihart. Your effective world, the world to which you react. In 1966, President Lyndon Johnson decided to bring television to South Vietnam and tapped Hull to serve as television program advisor to its government. As there were no broadcast towers, the programming was broadcast from an airborne antenna. We had two of them. We would use one on Monday, then that one would stay on the ground Tuesday to get the holes repaired where people had actually shot at the fuselage. Hull returned to Nebraska Public Television, which now had a nine transmitter network, and helped them to secure their own building. From their new state-of-the-art facility, Hull produced programs which were picked up nationally by PBS, such as Anyone for Tennyson. Their new building also became headquarters for the Native American Public Broadcasting Consortium. Hull was a founding board member and treasurer of the group, now known as Vision Maker Media. One of the first projects that I remember working on with him was the trial of Standing Bear. So that's what gave me the idea to do Standing Bear's Footsteps. In 1982, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting hired Hull as director of its program fund. Several people said, he's from Nebraska, they'll eat him alive. All the pressure that will be in that position. And just the opposite happened. He was very successful. During his six years there, the CPB underwrote programming for NOVA, the Metropolitan Opera, and the American Experience. Today, Hull serves as special advisor at Nebraska Public Media and as professor emeritus at the University of Nebraska. His passion has only grown for educational content and the power of public television to provide this content to the public. When he's not traveling the world, Hull serves as Nebraska Public Media's resident historian and mentor, making the rounds on the floors, meeting new employees, attending screenings, and always has a kind word of encouragement and a story to tell, usually about his grandkids. The studio he once shared with the likes of William Shatner, Dick Cavett, and Jack Lemmon is now named for Ron Hull. He's witnessed the change from black and white to color, from analog to digital, many things have changed throughout the years, but his passion for educational television has not. There's nobody in this organization now or previous that knows more about it than he does. I think when Ron leaves, he will be thought of as a legend and as one of a kind. There won't be another Ron Hull. Just glad we got to know him. I've always enjoyed Bette Midler's line in, I think it was the film, Oceans, when she said, well, I've talked enough about myself. What do you think about me? I am one of those people who's had a very lucky life. And now as I look back from a perspective of 92 years, I realize that my life has been made possible by the genius of our American democracy. Free enterprise, freedom to make our own decisions. And as broadcasters, we have a great obligation to do our part to ensure that our American values and traditions will endure from generation to generation. We're storytellers. I don't care if it's a news broadcast, dramas, documentaries, biographies. Every day, we're telling our history, our contemporary life, American stories, and they must be told with honesty, truthfulness, careful research, and the highest broadcasting standards. We influence people's hearts and minds. And we are a 
powerful forces, planting ideas and helping shape opinions. We must use this power to the benefit of all of our people. As John F. Kennedy said, America, if we are to be remembered in a thousand years, it won't be for the battles we have fought or the wars that we have won, but what we did for the human spirit. Please accept my heartfelt thanks for tonight.